Okay, take one, marker. In a world driven by innovation, where technology meets purpose, a new wave of tech startups has emerged. We are the pioneers reshaping the future. From personalized health apps to social and economic engagement platforms, we are on a mission to enhance your well being, improve perinatal care, and embrace disabilities as a superpower. But it doesn't stop there. We are disrupting the future of education technology. The visionaries are transforming learning experiences and streamlining admissions processes. Empowering minds one student at a time. We are creating a synergy between profit and purpose. Tech startups connecting nonprofits and corporations to tackle global challenges and create impactful solutions. These alliances are proving that technology is a force for positive change. But it's not just about the tech. It's about the voices behind it. Providing a space where people of color from the global south converge. A place where visions are shared, dreams are realized, and diversity thrives. Our stories echo across continents, impacting lives, and shaping a more inclusive future. This is not just a revolution. It's a revelation. Join us in celebrating the startups that are not just shaping the future, but making and brighter for us all. Tech for good. Because the future deserves a positive impact. This is Techstars Impact. by Cox Enterprises, Tim Doerr, everybody. All right. Thanks for braving the traffic and getting here alive. Um, hi, I'm Tim Doerr, uh, Managing Director of Techstars Impact and uh, Techstars Atlanta as well over the summer, uh, both powered by Cox Enterprises. Uh, welcome to our fifth demo day for Techstars Impact. Uh, as of today, we now have run 49 companies through this program and 129 companies through our partnership with Cox. Uh, we've made a lot of impact over the years, and this class is no exception. Uh, I'm excited to introduce you to the next group of nine for-profit, mission-driven companies that are working to literally save lives, amplify global voices, overhaul the education system, fix inequities in the economic ecosystem, and much more, you know, small, tiny things. But more importantly, we put together a class of amazing founders. Their hard work has culminated in tons of traction, progress, and best of all, impact. And I can't wait for you to see what they've been up to over the past 13 weeks, so let's meet the first founder right now. What does pizza have to do with product management? Turns out, a lot. When I was a freshman in college, I saw a flyer for free pizza. I went to that campus event for the free pizza and came out of it with a paid internship for all four years of college. And that one event put me on a path to becoming a product management executive. But out of 6,000 students on campus, only five of us attended that event. Thousands of these recruiting events happen every single day, yet millions of students missed out on these opportunities simply because they didn't know these opportunities exist. Students are eager to jumpstart their careers. Corporations are always looking to recruit diverse talent, and yet somehow they keep missing each other, and that is the problem. The tools used to reach students are not engaging or relevant enough. Resources and events are buried somewhere on the school's websites, in unread emails, and disappearing social media posts. I'm Mac Exume, founder and CEO of Campus Lush. I'm a proud first-generation Haitian-American student. I'm joined by Kyle Jacobs, my lead developer, and Preston Thornton, my advisor. And together, we're making engagement between students, corporations, and college admissions more effective and efficient. 
The Campus Lush app is closing the resource gap for all students by centralizing access to the academic, social, and professional resources, events, and organizations. And we're making it easier for corporations to recruit students right where they are. We simplified how students can find the events that they want and discover the events that they need. Corporations can connect with talented individuals right inside the camp campus experience. And also, get this, we're helping colleges streamline their engagement workflows and gain access to data that will help them enhance their student success. First, we're starting off with historically black colleges and universities because of their diverse and untapped talent pools, which aligns really well with corporate uh, initiatives around recruiting diversity students. And then we're going to expand into community colleges and beyond. So how do we make money? We charge schools an annual subscription and we charge corporations a usage-based subscription. This is a huge $36 billion market opportunity. In the last 90 days, we began developing partnerships with organizations that will give us access to over 100 companies to drive internships to students across HBCUs. And get this, you're gonna like this. We just launched our first paid university customer, Johnson C. Smith University. That's right, that's right. Campus Lush is the key to unleashing our students' potential, guiding them towards career opportunities of tomorrow. So if you're an advisor, investor, a corporation, a college administrator, or just looking to make an impact, scan the QR code. Let's talk. Thank you. In 2010, I was on a usual run in the middle of the day while my kids were at school and my husband was at work. On a sidewalk in a crowded area, I was actually grabbed and assaulted by a man. Three days later, this same man showed up on my doorstep late at night. For various reasons, I did not report my incident like a lot of women. This man was caught and arrested, but released a few days later. I became part of the 21% statistic that stopped running for quite some time. My story is one of many, and I'd like to stop for a minute and pay tribute because these women paid the ultimate price. Safety for women while running is a major issue that frequently makes headlines. Over 50% of women report being harassed while running and 92% of women are concerned for their safety when they're out running alone. My name is Dina Lewis, and I'm the founder of Running Mate. Over my 20-year experience as a long-distance runner, I've been harassed countless numbers of times, and I've actually been assaulted twice. This inspired me to create the Running Mate app to make outdoor running more accessible and safe. Our real-time, on-demand app matches verified safe mates with runners when the runner is ready to hit the road. Both runners and mates must pass background checks to ensure safety on our platform. Think of Running Mate as the Uber for runners. After downloading the app, onboarding is actually very easy. When you are ready for a run, simply click Find a Mate and search based on your location. Then you can set your pace, distance, and whether or not you want to wear headphones, which sounds kind of crazy, but that's code word to the mate that you're probably not going to want to talk. Running Mate will show you the mates available in your area, and you get to select the mate that you want to run with after you review their profiles. You can share your location with loved ones and even sync to your favorite health app. The mate comes to you, and the app will show the map in real time, just like Uber. The runner can leave a tip or review when the run is complete. Running Mate is for runners who don't want to run alone and are concerned for their safety. The Mate makes a flat fee off of each run. 
We are actually launching currently in three cities that have a large running presence and where safety is an issue. Since joining Techstars, we have collected data from over 400 beta testers. One day after the Trail Runner Nation podcast went live, wait for it, we had 160 downloads. There are 621 million runners worldwide, and there are 33 million female runners in the U.S. alone. Women did outnumber men last year by 58%. Our target runner is a woman who runs between three and five miles a few times a week and prefers to run outdoors. We do see a significant opportunity for women who travel to unfamiliar cities. I've been a runner and triathlete for over 20 years. I'm a three-time founder with experience in brick and mortar retail, online retail and services, and CPG. Prior to starting Running Mate, I spent 15 years in medical device sales and management. We also have a small team assisting us with branding, marketing, social media, and tech. When the headlines are gone, safety will always be an issue for women. Let's lead the world in a place that allows runners to just run safely. Let's run this together. Thank you. Seeing is believing in your potential. As a first-generation low-income student, I experienced educational disparities. Growing up, I didn't know anyone who had gone to college, and it wasn't until my junior year of high school that by chance I met Clarissa, a fellow first-generation Latina attending Stanford University. Her intellectual curiosity, motivation, and drive inspired me and enabled me to see the endless possibilities out there for students like me. With her guidance, I gained access to the tools and resources that ultimately enabled me to go to Brown University on a full scholarship. Without, <laughs> Without luck, I might not be standing here today. Students should not have to get lucky to have access to the tools and inspiration that can help them go to college and improve the quality of their lives. Higher education is correlated with increased employment opportunities, greater earning potential, and the capability to improve our communities. This issue truly does affect everyone in this room. EmpowerU is here to make a difference. Hi, I'm Elvia Perez, the founder of EmpowerU. EmpowerU is an educational platform that aims to address educational disparities by providing students access to resources such as scholarships, internships, and summer programs in hopes of enabling them to become college and career ready. EmpowerU is more than just an app. We're a bridge connecting students with peers and mentors nationwide. And we also hope to open doors to opportunities. With an internal database of over $2 million worth of scholarships, internships, and summer programs, we aim to cultivate student success and create generational wealth. Since joining Techstars, EmpowerU has launched a pilot program with over 50 high school students here in Atlanta, Georgia. And our pilot program yielded some promising results. EmpowerU was able to increase and enhance student college comprehension by 60%, amplify applications to scholarships, internships, and summer programs by 70%, and I'm excited to announce that we were able to increase student confidence by 72%. <laughs> the global higher education market is projected to reach $100, million, $100 billion by 2032, and this creates a massive opportunity for Empower You to tap into. To generate revenue, we plan to use federal funds such as SR funds, which total approximately $190 billion, and we plan to charge school districts an annual subscription fee. I'm incredibly grateful for my team of mentors and advisors who have been instrumental throughout my journey. They have brought their years of experience in engineering, product innovation, and business growth, and I would not be here today without them. Inspired by individuals like Clarissa, who encouraged me to dream big, EmpowerU aims to inspire others to do the same. 
Empower You is more than just a platform. We're a movement aiming to encourage each student to reach their full potential regardless of their background or circumstance. Let's unite to empower the next generation to pursue their dreams and build a brighter future for us all. Thank you. Black Panther is the 10th highest grossing film of all time. Crazy Rich Asians was the top grossing romantic comedy of the last decade. Parasite is the first foreign language film to win the Oscar for Best Picture. Diversity in the film industry is solved, right? <laughs> well, here's a different story, one you haven't heard. Meet Gabriella, the Dominican Guyanese American filmmaker who won the 2023 Nora Ephron Award. The prestigious honor given to the top female filmmaker at the Tribeca Film Festival. However, if you want to see Gabriella's film, tough luck for you. It's nowhere to be found an entire year later, neither in theaters or online. Your best bet is to fly thousands of miles and attend a film festival that might be screening this film. Unfortunately, Gabriella is not alone. Her film, Boca Chica, is one of over 2,000 films annually by filmmakers of color that premiere at top film festivals but get no distribution. This is 70% of high quality stories about people of color that never get seen by a global audience. The few that do get buried in bias algorithms and geofencing leaving our communities to go on a wild goose chase and rely on community recommendations to self-curate films from our own cultures. That's why we created Soleil Space. I'm Mika Cooper Edwards, founder and independent film producer of the world's first truly global community streaming platform. <laughs> Soleil is the first cross-culture destination of independent film of people of color around the world. Our experience allows our communities of, fil of film lovers to media travel with unprecedented exploration, cultural exchange, and immersion into authentic stories while engaging with each other through interactive features such as watch parties, groups, and peer-to-peer -peer recommendations. Soleil is also the first video subscription platform to allow filmmakers like Gabriella access to her audiences who can directly support her work. But this is not just a platform. We are building a sustainable ecosystem outside of Hollywood. The current system is stifling independent filmmakers and the current streaming model has become unsustainable due to a lack of differentiation, innovation, and audience focus, leading to cannibalization and consolidation. This leaves a severely underserved global majority that has been mislabeled as niche, a $160 billion market that is outpacing the growth of the global industry average. We are targeting 280 million digital natives across 15 cultural diasporas with $17 billion in revenue. We are shifting streaming from a one-dimensional binge model to a multi-sided interactive hub that delivers value to more stakeholders and will give rise to six diverse revenue streams over the next five years. We've curated an exclusive library from award-winning filmmakers and have built an ecosystem of editorial and community programming, attracting 30,000 monthly active users. <laughs> During Techstars, we launched our iOS app, already surpassing 1,000 downloads with subscribers in over 40 countries, and our Android app, I'm excited to say, will launch this month to a wait list of over 5,000 users. Yeah. 
And to top this more, <laughs> and to top this all off, we're partnering with Cox Communications to launch this summer our free ad-supported TV streaming, pursuing, <laughs> pursuing distribution on platforms like Sling, Plex TV, and Tubi. As founder and CEO, I bring 18 years of film production, product, and multinational marketing experience at global icons like Nike, Diageo, and PepsiCo. My partner, Sham Valor, was the architect of NBC's Peacock, Olympic, and FIFA streaming platforms. And we're supported by a diverse and passionate team with backgrounds hailing from companies like Deloitte, Atlassian, and HBO. We're on a mission to create an equitable and representative global film industry. To join us, scan the QR code behind me and enjoy a new way to stream together. Thank you. Let's do it, buddy. Let's do it, Mama. Okay. Okay. All right. So, do you want to start? You want to start speaking? Okay. Ready? Come. Yeah. Recently, I was at the bar. The server asked my brother, what do I want to drink? Why not ask me directly? Often, people do not see me or hear me. They think because I look different. I don't matter. I have dreams like you. I want to make money and get married, but I need support. All of us, all of us are different. All of us are different, and we all think plan differently, and we all need different support. As a parent and a caregiver, I know my son is capable of making choices, making decisions. But we work with an antiquated system where my personal intervention is required every step of the way. So despite wanting to, where is the possibility of independent choices? But this is not about one family. This is about the more than 60 million Americans with disabilities who are often thought of as not capable of making their decisions or managing their lives, and the 120 million of us who support them every day. We've created a system of lifelong dependency and isolation. Hey, I am Angus Sagar, founder of Let Me Do It. Welcome to a world where everyone belongs, a world where being different is your power. And I'm Amit Sagar, Angus's dad and the co-founder of Let Me Do It, a tech-enabled economic empowerment and social inclusion platform for 180 million Americans and 3.4 billion people globally. Let Me Do It is giving the power of choice to everyone. It allows everyone to make decisions in their own unique ways, empowering everyone to live an independent, full life. It's not about deciding for us, but with us. Together, together we can show the world we can do it. Despite well-meaning intentions, decisions have often been made for Angad, not with him. Like all of us, he needs support. He does not need control you know, control. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of you would have used Google Maps or Waze for driving directions to get here. That is what Let Me Do It was for decision making, a step-by-step -step way to getting to your objective. Like this uh, presentation today, Angad led the process, detailing the steps, identifying supports, engaging supports as needed. Angad was in the driver's seat with Let Me Do It as his Google Maps. There we go, the other one. Whilst decision-making is crucial, uh, what truly matters is the destination. Uh, our North Star for Let Me Do It is to create an ecosystem where, for our community which enables economic empowerment and social inclusion. Uh, for that, we've, Let Me Do It is structured in four key pillar, foundational pillars, starting with decision autonomy, which is the right to make decisions, the power of making choices, which is core to us as people. Uh, and then leveraging the platform 
to uh, as a as a job goes to navigating our job roles so so that we don't need minute by minute supervision or support and for employers to effectively in a, uh, you know engage this untapped talent pool and be the insight engine for corporations so that they understand this community there is believe me there is a lot more to this community than the disability and lastly if you are a financial services company, a consumer product company, a healthcare provider, or any sort of corporation, we are your access to this market. Disabilities do not discriminate on gender, race, color, economic status, and not all disabilities are alike. So we're starting with a focus on intellectual and developmental disabilities, autism, traumatic brain injury, a group which is more than 36 million strong just in the US alone, and progressively build our coverage across the disability spectrum. What sets us apart is we are the community, whether it's persons with disabilities or caregivers. Over the past 12 months, Angad and I have spoken to a cross-section of folks from across the community, and the common theme which emerges, we are as capable as you, and we need to have the right and power to make our own decisions, make our own choices, and we've engaged, you know, engaging uh, agencies like federal and state government agencies like the Department of Health, Council for Developmental Disabilities, advocacy organizations like the National Down Syndrome Society, Center for Youth Voice, Youth Choice, and progressive corporations like the Coca-Cola Company. We are laying the groundwork to engage, educate, and onboard our users and make a meaningful difference in their lives. And our focus is primarily on understanding use cases of what matters most to our users, uh, driving daily active usage of our users as they understand the power and the potential of the platform and continue to build awareness to drive adoption. And as of today, we have 125 active users, but what's more important is we've been able to more than double the daily active usage uh, in the five weeks since we've launched the app. Angus, <laughs> yours. My team includes people with disability and people who understand people with disability. And our amazing mentors. So join us in creating a culture of inclusion and empowerment and move away from a system structured on dependency, isolation, and soft bigotry. Okay. Last one. Join me, Billing, let me do it. Trust me, I can do it. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome job, buddy. Awesome. Yes. Hi, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. My name is Hannah Turner, and I'm the Senior Program Manager for Techstars Impact and Techstars Atlanta. My job is to make sure that the Accelerator program runs smoothly and that everything goes to plan. I also have the privilege of working with our corporate partner, Cox Enterprises. This amazing Cox team blows us away with their support of our founders. From weekly meetings to making introductions to investors, customers, and advisors, they are a huge part of what makes this program so special. Thank you so much. Not only does Cox support our founders during the program, but they also have a great team who helps me coordinate this Demo Day event. Whether it's the animated company logos that you see on the screen, to the incredible intro video, to the reception upstairs that you'll enjoy afterwards, Cox does everything they can to make this a magical evening. And finally, Cox also cares deeply about the Atlanta startup ecosystem. I know I'm not alone in recognizing them as one of the key players in its rapid growth. Each year, Dallas Clement, president and CFO of Cox Enterprises, visits the program and speaks to the class about his perspective on Cox and the Atlanta startup ecosystem. The founders love it, and I know you will too, because you're about to hear from Dallas as well. Please join me in welcoming Dallas to the stage. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Tim already said it. I, I recognize the traffic is, is bad. COVID is over. Traffic is bad. We so appreciate you being here. Um, wow. 
five companies, we've got more to go. Uh, that innovation, that passion, that's what this is all about. 129 companies, Cox has been here. We brought Techstars to Atlanta seven years ago. And, and the stories you heard, the passion, the ideas, the innovation, that, that's what it's all about. Uh, and that's part of the history of Cox Enterprises. Last year we celebrated 125 years in business. We started as a newspaper company. Um, and everyone brings their story, and that's from that perspective, um, that's how they approach innovation, that's how they approach disruption. And as a newspaper company, local newspaper company, we were competitive, uh, and we recognized that we needed to embrace new technology. And so we got into radio, likewise into broadcast television. And then when the internet started, who better to start an online uh, automotive classifieds than Cox, because we had Mannheim and we had newspapers. And What's so nice about Techstars and what's so nice about these programs is it, it affords people who approach problems, see problems in a way that is unique to them and unique to a, a segment that, uh, and, and, and they can solve it all, all differently, but these programs help give them the skills, give them the support, the mentorship, and from Cox's perspective, we, we absolutely love it. And we try to embrace that as best we can in our company. We're $23 billion uh, in revenue. And we try to empower our leaders um, to innovate in whatever way they are, uh, in whatever way they can. And we invest to try to take advantage of what skills we bring, our employees, our customers, our networks. Um, our founder, uh, Jim Cox, in his will to his family, he said, hey, look, if you do right by your customers, you do right by your employees, you do right by the communities that you serve, um, you'll be fine as shareholders or as, as a family. And so we not only try to focus on our customers, do right by our customers, always think long term. We try to do right by our employees, but also our communities. And the way we think about communities is a couple of fold, um, three ways in particular. Number one, um, it's about sustainability. And we started Cox Conserves back in 2007. Uh, big goals um, to get to zero carbon footprint, zero water footprint, zero waste footprint. Um, you all probably have heard of zero carbon because everyone's doing that. Well, I'm happy to report that we are the first company, enterprise company, to get to zero waste um, in America. Uh, we did that last year, and thank you, and validated just last month. And what's so unique about that is it's not sort of new technology. It was 10 years of change management. We have hundreds of locations, and you have to help people understand the recycling bin. And at a Mannheim auction, when a windshield needs to replace, what do you do with the windshield? So you have to look at each one of those waste streams and solve it uniquely. Um, and so we're, we're super proud of that. Um, we also have a path in terms of engaging with our community. We have a goal that by 2034, we want to empower 34 million people to live more prosperous lives. And we have six different ways we're thinking about it, whether it's access to education, health, technology, sustainability, um, training. Um, and so what's so nice about uh, Techstars Impact is that it's addressing a number of those. And like I said, there's a a lot of problems out there to be solved. And uh, we couldn't be more thrilled with Atlanta, uh, with Techstars Impact, this class, the other class, the passion and the way people are solving problems. The last thing we do is we try to engage with our uh, communities is, look, we're based in Atlanta. And so we want to give back. And we absolutely want to engage with Atlanta. That's why we brought Techstars here. That's why we are engaging in a variety of ways in Atlanta um, across the entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem, supporting uh, entrepreneurs. Yesterday we had a board meeting and uh, one story I'll share. We, we actually brought three of our leaders in some of our diversification businesses to come present to our board. One of them was a woman by the name of Jody Morgan who is the leader of Nexus Circular. So Nexus Circular is doing pyrolysis plastics recycling um, using a reactor. Doesn't burn it, it melts it into oil that can be put back in in a circular economy to, to, uh, to create plastic. Well, we found this entrepreneur seven years ago via an employee of Cox Communications, and the Cox Communications employee 
felt so good and so proud about working at Cox that they thought we could help this entrepreneur. We shepherded this, uh, this entrepreneur in the technology uh, um, for the last seven years and we're on the verge of validating it and then scaling it. And what's so wonderful about that is uh, it, it generates 90% less carbon by recycling the plastic to drive new plastic versus drilling for oil um, in the ground. And so those are the kinds of things that we do um, as we try to engage and support in, in, the Atlanta, in the Atlanta community. One of the other things we do in the Atlanta community, and this will be my um, entree, every year we try to bring up one of the alumni companies in Techstars to sort of tell you what they're, they're, they've been up to, um, how they're doing. Uh, we own the AJC. Truth, especially in an election year like this, is so fragile, so valuable. Um, and we are trying to really lean in and make sure that with the AJC we're doing that. We bought a company called Axios, which is a digital newsletter taking advantage of technology, but always with uh, the purpose of being nonpartisan and trying to get to truth. It's not always easy, but trying to get to truth. Um, I'm happy to bring up Walter Lay, who founded Branch, one of the Techstars companies. He's trying to do the same thing in elections and make sure people understand what politicians, what's their platform, what do they mean in a nonpartisan way, get information out uh, to folks so that they can be more informed as they go into elections and as they vote. And if we have a more informed electorate, it's, it'll be a better America. So, in any event, thank you all for being here. So appreciate you. So appreciate all the, um, the innovators, the entrepreneurs in this year's class. We're, we're very excited. And let me bring up Walter to share what's going on with Branch. Thank you all. All right. So who's looking forward to November? Yeah, we get to talk about everyone's favorite subject today, politics. Uh, and I know it's a bit of a dumpster fire, but I'm going to share the story about how I found some hope within politics. Uh, this story dates back to I had just graduated college. Uh, I was going to vote for the first time. I was excited to do my civic duty. And I get to the ballot box, and I see this. It's like 20 pages of people who I have never heard of uh, running for offices that I have never heard of. Uh, like county sheriffs, I didn't know we still had those. I thought we got rid of those in like the 1800s or something. Uh, and so I did what any good citizen does, uh, what most of us do, and I guessed my way through. I picked whoever I thought had the coolest name. I'm, I'm picking by party. I'm leaving a lot of offices blank. And I left that day and I felt bad. I felt like I just failed a test or something. Uh, but the real mistake that I made was thinking that just because I had never heard of these offices, that they didn't matter, when in reality, it's actually the exact opposite. When we think about politics, we think about this. But these offices impact our day-to-day -day lives so much more. These are the offices that decide how much money goes towards our police departments. These are the offices that decide what our children get taught in schools, that decide how much we pay in taxes, uh, that affect how expensive housing is. And that's all good news because your vote goes so much further for these local offices. And so why aren't we hearing from these local candidates more often? Uh, for starters, the guys on the left have much bigger marketing budgets. Uh, but if you are one of those people that tries to find information on these local candidates, you know, bless your heart, because uh, there's hundreds of them. It takes hours of time to try to find information on these candidates. At the local level, it's hard to find any information at all. And a lot of the stuff out there carries with it a pretty heavy political bias. To get everyday people making informed decisions where it matters, it had to become easier. So that's why I created Branch. My name is Walter Lay, I'm the founder of Branch, and I'm on a mission to help every person realize the full potential impact of their vote. So Branch is a nonpartisan website that informs you about what's on your unique ballot. You don't have to know anything about your upcoming election, you just enter in your address and we walk you through everything you're gonna see, your candidates, your referendums, who they are, why it matters, uh, and we have a team of researchers that do this. They go through candidate websites, news articles, uh, voting records, and they summarize kind of a quick view of every candidate uh, and a few bullet points where they stand on the key issues. 
And now we're using AI to do this at scale and to ensure that all the content remains unbiased. And through all of this, we're actually making it possible for people to cast informed votes where it matters and feel a sense of hope again in politics. We launched in 2020, and in one month before our first election, we had over 10,000 Atlanta voters use Branch. And since then, thank you. <laughs> since then, the audience has been growing every year, uh, particularly among swing voters. So uh, Branch users are three times more likely to vote for candidates from multiple parties, uh, which is huge because these are a pretty valuable audience to political candidates and to political groups. And so to have them all on one platform is a pretty valuable thing. About a year ago, I stood on the stage and I announced that we were uh, going to have some ambitious plans to expand Branch from our home state of Georgia to a second state. Uh, and now a year later, I'm excited to announce we are live in six states with, thank you. We already have contracts secured in nine states for the 2024 election cycle. Uh, and we're doing all of this as a revenue-driven, mostly bootstrap startup. And so how do we make our money? Uh, it's a big question we get. Um, and we make our money by licensing our technology and our candidate information to nonprofits and media organizations. Uh, for example, one group that we're working with in North Carolina this year used to put together a 20-page long print guide that they mailed out to over 2 million voters in the state. And now they're just sending people to branch. Uh, or the AJC, uh, who we will be providing technology for this election cycle to make their voter guides more interactive. Uh, 2024 is off to a really exciting start for us. So far this year, we've doubled our number of active clients and we've signed $300,000 in revenue, which is very exciting. For context, that's like all of what we did in 2023 uh, in the first quarter. Um, or I should say double of what we did in 2023. Uh, and what's better is that these are all annual contracts with groups who are here year after year, and so we won't see that dip in revenue in 2025 that a lot of political uh, businesses see. Uh, and so we're committed to growing this work until every person in America can cast an informed vote. Uh, and so we invite you to join us in this work, whether you're an investor, uh, whether it's as a team member, because we're hiring right now, uh, or simply an advocate. Um, there's also an election coming up in Georgia in like a month, so that's relevant to most of the people in this room. Uh, you can scan the QR code and get started with Branch. And together, bit by bit, we can rebuild our politics from the bottom up. Thanks. Thank you, Walter, for sharing your voice and your vision with us. I'm Anastasia Simon, and I'm the investment principal here at Techstars Impact and Atlanta, both powered by Cox. I had a whole plan to give you guys some cowboy Carter during my cameo, but I've been so busy poring over applications and sitting in Zoom with founders to select our next Atlanta class much like I did with this class, that I just didn't happen, it didn't happen. I'm sorry to disappoint, I'm very clever, I'm not that clever. So, I'm gonna mosey on out of the way and make room for the next four founders to share their stories. And in the words of my girl Dolly P, let's strike a match and light up this juke joint. I'll never forget the day I went back to work after giving birth to my oldest son. I could barely walk into the office, still in pain from my cesarean, exhausted from changing what felt like a million diapers and crying myself to sleep. No one ever told me this would be motherhood, and no one ever cared to ask this question. I put on a brave face for everyone while silently dealing with chronic stress and panic attacks. It took me two years before I told anyone and that someone, luckily, was a therapist who looked like me and shared my lived experience. But the unfortunate reality is that since that day, 
over 2,000 black moms didn't get a chance to return to work. As black women, we are three to four times more likely to die during and after childbirth. We face higher rates of chronic stress, discrimination, and medical racism. Giving birth in the US means not only risking your life, but your sanity, literally. Black moms experience mental health conditions like depression and anxiety at twice the rate of all new moms. And a majority of moms describe their births as traumatic but never receive care. Hi, I'm Lauren Elliott, founder and CEO of Candlelit Care, and I've spent the past five years of my life dedicated to truly understanding the maternal mental health crisis and building effective solutions to make sure women live to see their babies grow. Instead of facing these risks and conditions alone, Candlelit Care removes all barriers, placing culturally tailored screening, education, and coaching directly in their hands. We help employers retain diverse talent, doctors improve birth outcomes, and health plans save on overall cost of pre- and postnatal care. For decades, there was no health coverage for infertility treatment or doula services, but today, we're a part of two massive markets, and we directly address the supply and demand problem in the country. Specifically, we offer fully integrated, culturally affirming, and accessible and affordable care. We take advantage of this opportunity by offering women and birthing parents our services directly through their employers, health plans, and their healthcare providers. We can also be added to gift registries. Hey, baby list. And we're excited to be connecting with parents today. In the past year, we've enrolled and signed up over 70 black pregnant women in a clinical trial with the Cedars-Sinai Medical Center in LA. And we've trained over 100 New York City doulas on how to identify symptoms and refer moms to us. And I'm excited to announce here today that in just 12 weeks, we've scaled from only three coaching sessions to over 50 coaching sessions with many more to come. Thank you. As parents and proud aunties ourselves, we're not only qualified to solve this problem, but we are surrounded by incredible advisors, mentors, and coaches. As we grow, so will the needs of the families we serve. We will be there throughout those stressful IVF cycles, those messy plates, and those last minute play dates. So let me ask the question that often doesn't get asked. You all right, sis? Scan the code to check on us overlooked parents. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>
into the wider B2B career coaching market, helping to improve career prospects. Since September 2023, we can proudly say we've gained over 1,800 users. A couple more claps coming, guys. And hosted 18,000 AI-powered practice sessions. Building an incredibly passionate and engaged community throughout. So, where is Russia now? She didn't let her rejections hold her back. And this year, with Oralizer's help, she managed to get into her top school, receiving offers from every single place she applied to. We have hundreds of other stories just like Russia. According to data from this year alone, Oralize has more than tripled, yes, tripled, our students' chances of getting into their top medical and dental schools. Oralize is on a mission for global educational equality starting in the UK's medical and dental sectors with tailored advice that's universally applicable, yet personally refined. Our roadmap then extends to Australia, New Zealand, and of course, the United States, going into more competitive fields like computer science, law, and business administration. Our last stage looks at us spreading our wings and going global, expanding and getting into the careers coaching market, helping those young professionals start their careers right. Now, this is only the beginning for us, with my background as a dentist, a university admissions coach, and a sales manager at a top edtech firm in UK, my phenomenal co-founder, Angelina Aziz, building our AI model, and an experienced team of advisors helping us fuel our dream. That dream being making Oralize the top AI-powered admissions coach and careers advisor in the world. Whether applying for university or landing your dream job, Oralize is there to lend a helping hand. Join our mission to redefine educational access and help create more stories just like Russia. Thank you. <clears throat> I love to volunteer. I actually enjoy giving back. And more importantly, I love to make people smile. There is a unique feeling that you get when you get the opportunity of putting a smile on someone's face. Last year, I had the opportunity of volunteering for Braving, a nonprofit organization dedicated to empowering underrepresented college students. I dedicated 80 hours helping these students transition from college to career. It gets interesting. <clears throat> it was time for me to go back to Microsoft Giving Portal, where I work, to actually log my time. And it felt impersonal and very cold. Why? 80 hours of a beautiful experience logged as just 8-0 in a cell. Nothing more, nothing else. Most corporations want to see their impact clearly, but they struggle with complex, inefficient systems that don't really show the picture. Nonprofit organizations have amazing stories, but they still lack the tools to share them efficiently. And volunteers and employees want to feel their impact, time truly really matters, not just as hours logged, but a meaningful change. My name is Ben Garotiba, founder and CEO of Good Action. We understand these challenges, and that is why we've created a place for corporations Nonprofit organizations and individuals to intersect. It's a place where the needs are met and efforts are magnified. Here is a little snapshot that shows how simple we make this. And by the way, this is still the best user experience in this market so far. <clears throat> For corporations, we offer clarity and simplicity showing the real impact of their contributions. This saves them hundreds of hours, and they have access to the data points so that they can improve their corporate social responsibility and their ESG objectives. For nonprofits, they get to share these powerful stories, connecting deeper with their community and their supporters. Let's imagine the first social media of charity. And for individuals, the volunteer work becomes more than just time. It becomes a story of change that is recognized and valued. This is not just about making things easier. It's actually about creating connection 
and building lasting relationships. So, how do we make money? We have a TF subscription that is designed for corporations. And we are actively getting nonprofits on board so that we can showcase their impact, engage with corporate partners, not just as donors, but as co authors of change. Our fully operational platform has enabled a network of over 200 South African nonprofits to onboard. And guess what? We are currently onboarding Accenture Avenard and Transcard over here in the United States. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> we are tapping into the $500 billion charity space, and we are positioning ourselves as a key player in the philanthropic data ecosystem. Our team collectively has over 60 years of experience when it comes to building product and actually taking it from concept to market. We've done this in the last two decades for Fortune 500 companies, and we're still doing it. You know. And more importantly, what motivates us is actually the desire to do good. Get involved with the community and remember to always do the right thing. I also want to use this opportunity to thank Cox, Texters, and our honorable mentors. So, if you want to learn more about good action, if you are a nonprofit that is still struggling of how to make sense with the data you have, or you want to be part of this incredible journey, scan the QR code behind me and let's connect. Because with good action, impact begins with a single gesture. Thank you. hard to say this. <laughs> Four years ago, I feared I wouldn't live long enough to see my kids grow up. I was born with multiple chronic illnesses and the complications that arose from these have been life-threatening. Sadly, I'm not alone in these struggles. There are over 133 million individuals struggling with chronic illness in the US alone. And the majority of them track and manage their symptoms like this. The market is flooded with health trackers and devices. Yet despite access to unprecedented amounts of data, there remains a distinct lack of tools to help us combine, analyze, and interpret this information. I personally experienced this void in the market and it left me feeling hopeless. My health had taken a turn for the worse, and I had developed dangerous chronic infections. My name is Aaliyah, and with the advice and input of over 200 voices from the chronic illness community, I created Cora. Today, I am standing before you, celebrating nearly two years without chronic infections, thanks to the insights I received from my app. Cora saved my life. Using Cora, is like hiring a team of data scientists to run detailed analytics on your health. With 12 unique logs and multiple connections, Cora allows patients to receive personalized insights from our AI algorithm. An example of one of my own correlations reads, Cora has noticed that you are 73.53% more likely to log the symptom joint pain on days you log the ingredient ground beef. What's fascinating about this is that I do not have a trigger associated with steak or other red meat, only ground beef. Being able to identify what is impacting my health rather than cutting out entire food groups or playing trial and error with my medication has been an absolute game changer. While I still have an incurable condition that I have to manage every day, I am no longer throwing shots in the dark. Cora takes away the guesswork and allows me to spend less time tracking and more time living. Before Cora, I started and led three other successful businesses but I am not managing Cora alone. Our incredible team brings years of experience to the table, and together, we are committed to making a significant difference in the lives of those with chronic illness. 
Approximately one-third of adults worldwide suffer from multiple chronic conditions. In a landscape where healthcare workers are overburdened and the chronic illness community feels overlooked, the demand for solutions has never been higher. Initially, we are focused on serving individuals like me with chronic illness, but ultimately we plan to expand our reach to new moms with colicky babies and patients in hospice care who are no longer able to care for themselves. CORE is uniquely positioned to meet the needs of these underserved populations and secure a significant share of these expanding markets. We are collaborating with micro-influencers within the chronic illness community, partnering with journalists who represent our customers, and establishing relationships with various chronic illness foundations. Our current monthly subscription model offers access to the app in one month, six month, or 12 month increments. As CORE evolves, our presence in the healthcare landscape is becoming increasingly prominent. Our first provider pilot is set to launch this June, and we are collaborating with California State University Channel Islands on a randomized control trial to support patients with Crohn's disease. I'm also thrilled to share that 50% of our beta testers report that they use Cora every day. See, Cora is not just another health app. It is a lifeline for those like me who need it most. The demand for this app is undeniable. Thanks to Cora, I'm still here to watch my kids grow up. So join me in extending this lifeline to others in need. Thank you. That was awesome. Cool. Uh, before I go, I have some thank yous to make. And while I'm doing that, I want to just make sure everyone who is in the audience gets backstage for the founders. Sorry, not all of you. Um, <laughs> and uh, we'll get them out in a sec. Uh, first, I got to say thank you to my program team. Oh my god, I cannot do this job without them. Uh, seriously, uh, I would probably go insane. Um, Anastasia, you, you just saw, uh, she is the one finding all these companies and is incredibly helpful throughout the program with investor connections, advice, feedback, and sometimes just a good talking to. Um, Hannah, who's been with us, I think this is her eighth demo day, if, she, if I remember correctly. Like, she's been around forever. She is, like, just the leader of, like, our programs and makes sure it all happens. By the way, she's now our senior program manager. Uh, got promoted and definitely deserved. Uh, Brittany, who is like the master of the behind the scenes, like she makes everything happen magically. Uh, and sometimes I just don't even know how she does it, but she does. Um, and then Dalen, who's new to our team, she made all these slides look really, really awesome. Uh, thank you, Dalen, for like just absolutely burning the midnight oil to like get this working um, and just make this come off perfectly. Next, I gotta thank our mentors. Um, well, we have many names up here. We actually have a, a list of over 300 now, uh, folks that are in the, this audience that have contributed to our programs uh, throughout the years. We, 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 our program is mentor-based, and the fact that you guys are giving your volunteer time to help out us and our companies is just, it, it, I, I don't have words for it, it's just such a huge benefit, and thank you. Uh, also, uh, a number of uh, folks have come in to speak to the class in various forms, whether that's our founder stories, usually we have them Wednesday nights, or it's a workshop, or just a Ask a VC session, things like that. Um, thank you for coming in and volunteering your time to speak directly to our, our class and transfer the knowledge that you have in your brains to theirs. And then lastly, I gotta thank our global network partners. Um, we have a number of them now, <laughs> so let me get through the list. Amazon, Brex, Deal, HSBC, HubSpot, JLL, LegalPad, Mercury, and Stripe. Um, they provide a ton of valuable perks, literally millions of dollars of perks to our companies. But beyond just that, they provide direct hands-on support. Um, you know, when somebody has a particular problem with one of these companies, they can go directly to the source of that problem and get it solved. Um, and they also provide tons of mentoring, advice, feedback, workshops. Um, they're really lean in, they're really high value. We very much appreciate their contributions. 
And lastly, let's get the founders out on the stage. Let's get the founders. There's a no. There's the founder. If there's any way you think you can help out these companies, big or small, investor, advisor, employee, um, please scan this QR code, uh, get their info, all the contact details you need are there. Um, please reach out and help. Um, you can do it, you can help us create an amazing set of companies that will be long lived and make a huge impact in the world. Um, and in particular, if you sign up as an investor, I will be bugging you, um, sorry. But I'm going to send you all their contact details, Calendly links to book time with them directly, um, so you can meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, they're amazing people. Please sign up for some time with them and just get to know them, even if it's just to just be a little bit investigatory. Like, they're awesome people. You should get to know them. And then lastly, let's just have one more round of applause. <laughs> cool. I like how I can just like pull a lever, get applause. Um, so we get a rooftop reception. Uh, this time it's not delayed by rain, uh, just by traffic, I guess. Uh, but we'll see you all upstairs. We just go up these stairs either here or here, all the way up to the top. Um, and we'll be out there to meet in person. Thanks. All right, bye everyone.